else on the UK border and we can talk to Graham Pask, who is the Kent Area Manager for the Road Haulage Association. Thanks very much indeed for joining us today. So it seems that nearly 4,000 lorry drivers have been caught up in all this, and that's just on this side of the channel. Plus, drivers crossing over now need tests. So this is just not going to be a quick fix, is it? No, unfortunately, it's not going to be a quick fix. Uh, there's, uh, the situation has been exacerbated today because of some drivers in Dover are blockading the port to actually uh, not allow the, the drivers that have got COVID tests past them. They feel aggravated because they were there before them. So the organisation for the COVID test has been pretty poor. So what's happening now is that the drivers are backing up in Calais because the boats aren't leaving Calais so they can't get out of Dover. So the situation is getting worse on both sides. But in reality, the vehicles this side and the drivers this side say there's probably in excess of 10,000 in the country that are trying to get back out again. But that's not going to happen this side of Christmas. The COVID tests, although they're being done quite rapidly now, aren't going to cover enough drivers to get out by 2 o'clock tomorrow afternoon, which is when the last ferry leaves Dover. So unfortunately, there's going to be a high percentage of those vehicles still stuck in the UK over the Christmas period without proper facilities. The facilities at Manston are very basic. There are toilets, but there's no shower facilities. And the food, again, is basic. The drivers there are complaining that they're, they're being offered the good British staple of British burgers and chips. There's no fresh vegetables, no fresh fruit. So the situation's pretty dire there. So clearly far from ideal, but who do you blame for all this? Well, it's very poor preparation from our government because at the end of the day, we could all see this coming and the COVID testing should have been set up at the very instant this was announced, the block that the, the closure of the port or the closure of the, uh, the border was announced because we knew it was going to be a prerequisite to the border being open to have the COVID tests. But we delayed the start of the COVID tests until this morning. So, of course, that has exacerbated the situation because what could have happened while the drivers were stuck on the queues over the last two days, they could have had their COVID test, they could have all been on the ferries now and on the way back across Europe. But, of course, the, the, the real issue is the fact that what is the point of this? Because these drivers, most of which aren't UK drivers, 99% of them are you know, European drivers. Uh, they'll, they'll go into France. Uh, when they get there, most of them will head straight up towards the Belgian border. So there'll be a, a, a maximum of an hour and a half in France at no risk to the French people. So using the guise of the COVID spread is not the real reason for these, these uh, jams and the, the closure of the border. There's a political reason behind it, but what that is, I don't know. But it certainly isn't COVID. So they're sort of trying to mark the whole event with COVID when it isn't actually the case. And just how important is this crossing, both to the UK and to Europeans? Uh, it's, it's massively important. I mean, the 20% of the goods that enter the UK come through the Dover Straits. That's not just foodstuffs, it's all sorts of materials. I believe there's a number of factories that have closed down uh, due to the lack of supply of material for raw material for production. And of course, there is foodstuffs. There's a, there's a regular feed of... Uh, fresh goods like uh, salads and that from uh, from Spain that come up there every day. Um, so there will be shortages, of, not of basic staple food, but shortages of the type of, good, of goods that we're used to having on a daily basis. But it's not going to cause any hardship in the UK. What's actually causing at the moment is hardship to business, hardship to the 10,000 plus drivers that are struggling to get back across the water on both sides. So. It's, it's an economic game that uh, the politicians are playing right, uh, with people. And it's, it's, it's almost like a humanitarian crisis. We're almost holding 10,000 people to hostage at the beckon of the governments, deciding how they're going to resolve it. OK, good to talk to you, Graham Pask from the Road Haulage Association. Thank you.